I want to talk about carrying the cross of Jesus Christ. In Luke chapter 14, verse 27, Jesus says, whoever does not carry his own cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. He sets out a very specific um, activity for those who claim to be his disciples. Now the cross has always been a powerful reminder of the suffering of Jesus and it's a symbol for true discipleship for those who would follow after him throughout all these years. It's also a reference point for things that Christians must suffer in order to continually, faithfully serve the Lord. We often say, I carry my cross, and in saying that, we're talking about the type of suffering, the type of difficulties that believers have in continuing to be disciples of Jesus. But carrying our cross refers not only to the trials and the hardships that we experience as believers, it also describes the way that we respond to these things. Let me give you an example of what I'm trying to say. It's the cross of Christ only if we choose to carry it as He carried His cross. In other words, we don't have a choice for much of the suffering we experience in our own lives. However, if we choose to bear our sufferings in the spirit of Christ and with His glory and with hope in Him, if that's the way that we carry our cross, then this is something that we can control. In other words, we can't control the type of things that happen to us to cause us suffering, but we can control the way that we react to these things. And if we choose to suffer in this way, then this transforms our suffering into the cross of Christ. Another idea behind the carrying of the cross is this. It is the cross of Christ if others see it as the cross of Christ in us. Let me explain. Jesus openly carried the instrument of his death on his back. He wasn't ashamed to die for us in a, in a very public way. He literally carried the cross upon which he was crucified. Jesus confessed our name through his suffering on the cross and we must not be ashamed to confess his name with our sufferings as well. There's a lot of you know, there's a lot of singing, there's a lot of, you know, you watch on television, people are singing all kinds of songs of praise to Jesus, which is good, mind you. And uh, there's public worship and there's excitement and all these good things and people say, wow, we're, we're confessing the name of Christ. And indeed they are in a very safe way, in a very easy way. But Jesus tells us the way to, to confess His name, the way He confessed our name is by carrying his cross. If others know that our faith in Him is firm despite our suffering, then our cross glorifies God just like the cross of Jesus glorified Him as well. And maybe one other idea about this cross-carrying business. It's the cross of Christ if we resurrect from it like He resurrected from His cross. You see, suffering all by itself will not redeem the soul. Pain can make a person grow mature. Obstacles can develop patience and wisdom. We see that always by observing various individuals on the news or in the newspapers who suffer tremendous things and who become very stoic in their, in their suffering, but they have no faith in Christ. But sufferings and trials as a Christian have more than just personality consequences do more than simply give us maturity. They have eternal consequences as well. You see, suffering without Christ, regardless of how we react, only brings an acceptance of death, perhaps an easier acceptance of death. But suffering as the cross of Christ brings life after death. So without the cross of Christ in this life, there's no life after this life. For the cross to be the cross of Jesus, we don't just wear it like jewelry. You often see in movies and on TV and so on and so forth, personalities and artists and, and others are wearing a cross or, or they have a cross as a, as a tat or jewelry and so on and so forth. Well, for the cross to be the cross of Jesus, you don't just wear it like that. For the cross to be the cross of Jesus, it has to wear you like the cross war Jesus. It's completely the other way around. So I ask you, those who are watching this short message, 
Have you taken up the cross of Christ yet? I know you might be singing His praises and reading His word and gathering with others uh, who may you know, believe in Him, but my question is, have you picked up the cross? You take up the cross at first in the waters of baptism as you confess His name and as you repent of your sins. Acts chapter 2, verse 37 to 38. And you carry it every day by persevering in faith. Not persevering in trying to be perfect, because that's a very discouraging thing, but in persevering in faith despite your imperfection, despite the obstacles, despite the difficulties in life, persevering day after day after day. That's what carrying the cross is all about. And you finally put it down when Jesus comes for you in death or He comes from, for all of us in resurrection. Whoever you are, wherever you're at, Jesus calls you to pick up your cross and follow Him. I hope for your eternal well-being that you'll do that today.